So the project for today is to replace my Flex Steel Jackknife L couch with something a lot more comfortable <laughs> and something that doesn't have this problem that you'll be very familiar with if you've got Flex Steel furniture. It all starts to flake over time. Now, this is a 2012 Bounder 35K, so um, it has held up fairly well over time. But if you have one of these couches, you'll probably find they're not the most comfortable couch. Um, they aesthetically look nice, and they do have the feature where this arm extends out and you have the additional seat. But I am willing to give up that capability for a reclining couch. So that is my goal is to install a dual reclining couch that will fit in the space and still look nice. And that's what we're going to go over today. So if you're thinking about doing this project, let me give you a couple of tips and tricks. First thing is you're going to need to know how long is this couch. Okay. Now in my particular model, which I think is very common, this is 82 inches from the basically the starting of this part of the couch all the way to this arm. Now, if you take a look, I've still got a couple inches to work with, so I could possibly squeeze an 84 inch couch in there if I wanted to. The second thing you need to be very aware of is how deep is the couch. In this particular couch, I've got about 34 and a half inches to the front of the couch. And I have 38 inches to the very front of where the slide mechanism goes to. Now, why that is important is when you put your new couch in here, it will need to be a certain distance away from the wall, especially if you're doing a reclining couch. And not all reclining couches are wall huggers. So you want to make sure you get a wall hugging couch that is a true wall hugging couch. As I shopped for mine, I found that many of the couches required six, seven, eight inches when you were fully reclined. That meant you were going to have to pull this couch out in order to mount it almost six or eight inches away from the wall, which was not going to work because I don't have that much room in the front. So look for that wall hugger. And you also need to make sure when it is mounted at the distance away from the wall that the brace underneath the couch is still going to be on the slide not out here because it's got to have something to brace the the weight the next problem probably one of the biggest problems for me was that i still wanted to be able to use my mid bathroom now as you can see from the factory there's no problem it clears um, that entire uh, area in front of the couch there. But as you get a wider couch or a couch that, that comes out further this way or longer, you could be uh, start to have a problem with being able to open this door. For example, if I do go 84 or I bring a couch out to this 38 inches, I'm no longer going to have an entire doorway to walk through. I'm going to shorten that up to about eight inches and it's going to be very very hard to get uh, through that door as well as the floor space so you can see there's not that much floor space between your fireplace and the slide or the front edge of the carpet when you're in um, travel mode so be aware of that because it might be very hard for you to squeeze into that bathroom if you have a couch that comes out too far so those are all the challenges to deal with and the, the final challenge is um, how high the back is. You can see they, they've kind of put this valance in these side pieces here that come down to right where this couch meets. And most recliners are going to be higher than that. So your option will be just to remove this part or remove this, maybe cut it to be a little higher to match where you need, put it back on, uh, keep that aesthetic look that you have. So that's the project for today. Um, and that's what we're going to try to do is see what it's going to take to get this couch out of here because this is a bit of a project um this couch does not fit through the door <laughs> so if you've got uh you know any kind of rv you've probably got 27 inches to work with you know from side to side when the door is open so you have to find a couch that will fit through 
27 inches. So be sure to look for your new reclining couch that has removable backs. And the couch that I purchased, I will talk about that when we, when we show that, but I had to make sure it had that. And I found that even the vendor site was incorrect. They said I needed a 32 inch door and I do not. It will actually fit easily through a 27 inch door. So be aware of that. Um, this particular couch, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be taking the jackknife part, we're going to be removing that from the corner piece. Now the good part is the jackknife piece will go through the door without much problem. This corner piece on the other hand will not go through the door. There, It is not 27 inches in any direction. So it's going to require some disassembly. And that's probably the biggest pain with this couch. So it makes you wonder um, how they get this thing in here. Well, Fleetwood puts the couch in before they put the front cap on the RV. <laughs> so they never intended this couch to come out of here um, in one piece. So just be aware of that. You're gonna have a little bit of work to do to, to disassemble that. And if you take care in the disassembly, you could probably you know save the couch and, and not tear it up too bad. So let's move on to the first step and that's going to be putting the slide out. Okay, now that we've got the slide out, you can see we've got quite a bit more room to work with here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking this drawer out. And this lever here, you end up lifting and you can pull the drawer out and then you're gonna to need to release the drawer. And you'll see that there are a couple levers right here. And I think you just pull up on those levers on both sides and you'll be able to remove the drawer from the slide mechanism. Okay, now that we've got the drawer out, um, it looked like taking the L side out would actually be a little more difficult at this time. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the jackknife portion of this couch and get it out of our way. So what you're gonna need is a 5 8 inch socket and you're going to need to remove four bolts. There's one here, one a little further back, and then obviously two on this side, and then you should be able to remove this entire jackknife portion and get it out of your way. Okay, once you've extended that L part of the couch, what you're gonna do is repeat exactly what we did before. And we're going to take the bolts out that mount this entire piece in here. There should be two or three. Looks like I don't have one on that corner, but I've got one here, here, in here, and that will allow us to pull the couch out. Okay, so what we've done is extended the leg on the couch in order to get to the backside. We flipped it over, and I think it's gonna be make it easiest to take these four bolts out that hold this L part onto the couch or the extension arm onto the couch, and that will definitely lighten it up so we can get this piece out um, the way it is, this is just right at 27 inches, so I think we can wiggle that out of the door. And then it's going to help us get better access to taking this back piece off or seeing if there's some way to possibly turn that and get it out of the door without having to take any more apart. So let's try that next. Okay, so you're going to have to take this uh, part of your couch apart in order to get it out the door. Obviously, this end would go through, you could stand it up, but your problem is down here on the other end. On this end down here, you wouldn't be able to get that through the door. So that side and this back needs to come off. And I think there's a fairly easy way to do this without taking a thousand staples out. First, you're going to take the Velcro up and it'll go up about halfway. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use a putty knife and you're going to get underneath this and you're going to pull this up and what this has is a metal strip with little brads facing through there so it's kind of like a carpet tack and once you do both sides you'll be able to flip that out of your way and now you've got this gray board and what you've got is you have some screws that are attached under the gray board through the vinyl into the frame. Okay, the next step is you're gonna to have to release um, the vinyl here. There's gonna be a couple 
uh, staples in here. You're gonna have a row of staples under here that you have to release so that you can take the, the frame off or the, the cushions off of the frame. There's gonna be some down here. So all these staples, those staples, and these staples will need to come out. And then I believe there's going to be another screw on the other side coming into this part of the frame. But let's get these out and see if there is or isn't. All right, so taking off the side here, there is another screw. So after you get the staples out of here, fold that back. You're actually gonna find your foam is probably glued to the frame. And then when you pull down, you'll see that there is a screw going right through there to that uh, plywood. So we have to take that off on both sides. And let's see if that gets this released. Okay, so here's the final product. You can see how easy it is to take this apart. <laughs> Trust me, uh, I spent hours and hours looking at this and they have screws behind screws, under staples, behind a board. There is no way to get this apart without taking it down to this level. So don't even try, save yourself hours you are just going to essentially destroy the back of this. I mean, you could put it back together. Don't get me wrong. It's all there, but uh, yeah, not worth the effort. Um, you can definitely save the jackknife. That's going to be fine. Even the side piece that came out, that's really unscathed. No problems there. It's just this part here and... You know, I wouldn't try to put this back in an RV, but, you know, throw it in your man cave. Do something like that with it. But anyway, um, let's go on to the next part, get all this cleaned up, and get the new couch in here. And hopefully that goes uh, real easy. Okay, so there's a lot of misinformation regarding this couch. If you look at the manufacturer's website, they will say that it requires 32 inches to through a door and that is incorrect um, there's also questions in the reviews what have you about do the backs come off and yes they do but they work a little differently than they do like a lazy boy a lazy boy will have a lever you pull and then you take the back off this does not have this this has a clip so when it slides down a little clip will pop out through this hole so you just have to push that in to remove the back so this will fit through an RV door at 27 inches and I will show the exact make and model of this couch. Okay, so in order to get this through the door, um, you could carry it in one piece, but what I'm electing to do is I'm going to take the two pieces apart separately, which is just gonna require taking where the feet sit. There's going to be a bolt at each location. You'll take these bars off and then each section will be individual, which will be much easier and less risk of damage. And then once I get it in there, again, I can flip it back this way, put the four bolts for each one in, and should be good to go. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like when you split it into two different pieces. Okay, as far as fitting the couch on the slide, what I found is if this bar is at the very, very front of the slide, I can almost go full extension when in laid back position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the foot and move it down to here, but I've got to retain this bolt to hold this frame together. So it'll look basically uh, like this, where so I moved it from here and I came down to here. So this will definitely be on the slide. This will go to the very front edge of the slide, maybe slightly over to about here. And that will give me the three inches I need so I can go full recline without hitting the wall. Okay, here's a final look at the install. So you can see we left ourselves a couple inches here on the side to be able to get to the mechanism to recline. Again, this is a manual reclining couch. This is from Ashley Furniture. I think it's called the Bolzano. 
It is 76 inches long, and they say it requires 40 inches out, and I believe it's 40 inches high. Uh, price at the time I purchased it, right in the $650 to $700 range. Um, I also really like the material. This is kind of a, I don't know, a faux leather suede type of material. So uh, unlike this material, which is very um, unfriendly to cats, <laughs> like to dig their claws in. This stuff works great. We've had some Lazy Boy furniture with the same material and it's lasted a really long time. So uh, let's talk about where this fits on the slide. If you look down where the carpet line is right here, I'm just barely beyond it um, in regards to the cushion, but um, the solid piece here is right there. Now, what does that mean underneath? Let's take a look. So underneath, what you've got is this main support bar here. Remember, we had to take that off and we moved the plastic feet back about three inches. Now, what the reason I did that is my slide ends about right here and you need the weight of the front of this on the slide. So with here, you're gonna be back about uh, three inches. So all the weight is back there and no issues. And this gives me full articulation of the couch. Let's go up and take a look at that. So if I put this all the way back as far as it will go, I'm still just off the wall. So I won't be rubbing that wall and I can relax in full comfort. So anyway, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Um, your kudos is how I get paid for these videos. And I will see you on the next.